Welcome to episode 16 of the Game Caddy Tutorials. I'm Scott Moeller, and in this video, we're going to take a, a first look at the latest version of the Game Caddy, which is Game Caddy version 5.2. And this particular version of the Game Caddy gives you some added control over the wind so that you can play uh, some of APA's golf courses that have special wind characteristics. So in this video, what I'm going to demonstrate is how to play Birthplace, which is, of course, APA's version of St. Andrews. Now, Birthplace uh, at times uh, comes uh, when you order the APA Golf Master Game. It's the, game, it's the course that is sometimes included. APA seems to rotate um, courses so that it may not be the version that's included um, at this time or when you got your game, but it's one of the more popular APA courses out there, and it's certainly a lot of fun to play that course, uh, whether you use the game caddy or not, um, but it does require you, if you follow the APA Master Game rules and the rules that uh, come uh, with Birthplace, it does require you to roll for wind on each shot, unlike uh, most of the other uh, APA courses where you're basically just rolling for wind at the start of a hole. That's, of course, after you have set the day wind conditions. Now, this video, uh, I'm going to assume that if you're watching it, you're familiar with the APA Golf Master Game uh, and its rules. I'm also going to assume that uh, you have some familiarity with the game caddy. If you do not, I encourage you to go back and watch the previous video, which is uh, episode 15, I believe, on um, uh, a game caddy 5.0. Point zero. Okay, let's get started. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is that uh, we want to uh, import uh, Birthplace. So you can see down here that we've already got Magnolia and Seaside set up on uh, course tabs one and two, and we could overwrite one of those courses if we wanted to, no big deal. But we'll go ahead and put it in to the course three tab. So I'll click uh, on that tab. We'll click the import uh, course button and if you come over here and look down the list uh, you'll see that course number six is birthplace so we'll select that and we'll just go ahead and close and when we do that you can see that birthplace gets loaded into course tab number three all right um, you might uh, want to before we take a shot take a look at uh, hole number one on birthplace, which is uh, the hole that we're going to use. And uh, here's what that hole looks like in terms of the APA course board. And you can see that uh, there's a lot of fairway on this course. The center line tends to be um, close to the out of bounds there, which is on the right uh, and uh, just off the tee. Uh, that out of bounds area is only 25 yards away and then as you go down the fairway you can see that it becomes uh, much closer to the center line to where you get at about the 275 280 yard mark um, not only are you close to out of bounds uh, but you're within five yards of uh, some water a little stream that um, uh, trickles through this particular hole and across the fairway and then if we take a an even closer look at the green itself uh, you can see that uh, for birthplace this is one of the smaller greens but it's still fairly large in size compared to some of the greens on other APA courses now the other thing about birthplace and the reason that we're even doing this video is the uh, course has its own uh, wind charts. So each hole has a separate uh, uh, wind chart 
that you use whenever you're dealing with moderate or blustery winds. Uh, and this is uh, an unusual feature uh, for APA courses. I'm not um, saying it's the only course uh, that has this feature, uh, but most of the time when you're playing, uh, you'll be using the wind charts that uh, are in the rule book that come with the game. And for birthplace, the only time you use those um, rule book wind charts are when you have calm wind. Whenever you have moderate or blustery wind, you use the whole wind charts. One other uh, difference about uh, birthplace, in terms of wind anyway, is that you roll for wind on each shot. Uh, well, each shot that's more than 45 yards out. Let's put it that way, because wind doesn't affect shots uh, closer than that. And normally, if you're playing um, one of the other APA courses, what you would do is after you set up your uh, wind conditions for the day, you would just roll for uh, the wind at the start of the hole. And of course, you could have a situation where you have to uh, roll uh, for wind uh, after a shot because you've got a variable wind, um, but you can have quite a lot of wind that's a constant wind on days where the conditions are moderate or blustery. And I'm going to show you how to use the game caddy in uh, both the scenario when you have calm wind and when you have uh, moderate or blustery wind. So in this particular version of the game caddy, uh, what we want to do is go into the uh, game configuration uh, settings. Now I came over here to the conditions tab just to show you uh, that uh, I've already uh, set some things up here. And uh, we have pin number six. That's the one that I selected. Uh, we're going to start off with calm wind and demonstrate how to use that. And I've selected uh, hard uh, conditions in terms of the, um, the uh, course surface um, just because it gives a lot of roll and that makes it a little bit more interesting from a uh, shot strategy uh, standpoint. Again, you know, experienced game caddy players will know that you can actually roll for all these things and uh, set them up uh, using the charts over here, but I'm not going to uh, cover that territory. Now, there's two ways to call up the configuration settings. One is to press uh, the hotkey combination, which is the control key uh, plus the letter O, uh, or you can click on the configuration settings button which is uh, now over here on the conditions tab. In previous versions, you would have found this uh, button on the uh, caddy tabs, but now it's over here on the conditions tab where it makes a little bit more sense uh, to have it. So I'll press this button and that brings up our game configuration settings. And to play birthplace, uh, because uh, we need to roll for wind on each shot. What I have selected here is modified wind and put a check mark in the on each shot checkbox. I've also selected auto roll so that anytime the wind rolls menu comes up or opens, um, the roller will take care of rolling the dice for me and I don't need to click the roll button each time. And that just speeds things up a little bit. So to recap, when you're playing birthplace, um, anytime you're playing birthplace, you want to use the modified wind selection here. And uh, you want to check on each shot and whether you use auto roll is entirely uh, up to you. Uh, and we're going to ignore all these other settings here. Uh, there's other information on the Game Caddy website that describes what each of these things mean. And I'm just going to go ahead and click the Apply Settings button to set all that up. We'll come back to um, Birthplace to load a hole. 
but I want to show you uh, quickly that I've set a couple of players up in here already. I've got player one who's Kevin Na, and I've entered his ratings from his 2022 player card into these various rating boxes that are over here, and I've already selected clubs for him, and I've done something similar over here on Caddy 2 for Justin Rose. All right, come over here to birthplace. We're going to load hole one. And that asks me what hole number I want. I'm going to put a one in there, click OK. Because this is hole number one, player one is going to be up. Uh, that's Kevin Na, and he's ready to go. Now, if I look at uh, this course and I want to, you know, set up a, a shot that's smart, uh, for Kevin. Uh, what I notice is that I can get in trouble if I go to the right. It's much safer if I uh, hit the shot to the left. I, uh, Kevin's not a long uh, ball hitter, but uh, that's okay, particularly in this case, because since we're playing to hole six, um, you can see that it's 20 yards off the center line to the left. And while it would be really risky to try to hit the ball to the right of the center line uh, in order to set up a good angle, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the ball to the left. I just don't want to hit it too far so that I'm not limiting myself in terms of my ability to work the ball to the left on my uh, second shot. So it doesn't matter whether I do this before or after I click the all-in-one menu button here but I'm just going to come over here uh, into the aim box and I'm going to put uh, a 40 in there in terms of how far I want to aim to the left. And you can see that because of the other settings that I've got in the game configuration um, menu that there's going to be a distance adjustment for that and 10 yards are going to be knocked off because I'm aiming so far to the left. Now, uh, I could uh, press Control plus Q to call up the all-in-one menu, or I can just go ahead and click this button here, which is what I'll do. And you'll notice that when I do that now, because I've selected Modified Wind, um, and we're going to do this for each shot, this Wind Rolls menu automatically pops up, and it's done a dice roll for me. I, don't, I can click on the button if I want, or I can roll my own dice if I want, and I would choose to roll my own dice, I can actually overwrite the number that's in here because um, this nothing's happened with this number yet. Uh, but I'm not going to roll my own dice. I'm just going to take whatever the game caddy gives me. Uh, and that number is a 64. Because we have Calm Wind, the game caddy is going to use the built-in wind charts, Okay, the ones that are essentially in the APA game rule book. I don't need to do anything further uh, with the wind, with Calm Wind. So all I have to do on uh, birthplace at this point is click the continue button. And when I do that, look what happens. It uh, recognizes that a 64 for Calm Wind is a crosswind left. And it has uh, set up the game caddy to uh, ensure that that's the wind effect that happens on Kevin's tee shot. And uh, if you're wondering, well, how does the game caddy do all that? Again, you don't need to do this, but if you come over to the conditions tab, you'll see that what it's done is it's come over here under calm wind. It's come down to the first roll. It's looked at 64. It's a crosswind left. And then up here in this anemometer, it has put in the uh, letters necessary for the game caddy to recognize, okay, it's got a crosswind left. There's going to be a, a second roll involved after the shot is taken. So we'll come back to caddy one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and with Kevin. Uh, because uh, we don't want to hit the ball too far, we want to give ourselves uh, a chance to work the ball. And because his average W rating is a 7, I'm probably going to go with uh, something um, like I could go with a three wood or a five wood. I'll just play this really safe and uh, I hit a five wood 
off the tee. I'll click the roll dice button, and that number is a 43. Might have been a, a good uh, thing that I uh, did uh, select a five wood instead of a three wood because a 43 on Kevin's card in the W column is a 33. So I'll put the 33 in there. I'll click take the shot, and that shot has gone 210 yards left 45. Now, what was the wind effect? Okay, so when I click this take shot button, the second wind roll was automatically completed for me uh, for this cross wind left. These boxes up here are empty, which means that this crosswind had no effect whatsoever on that shot. And you say, well, what was the actual, you know, roll that came up? Well, again, you don't need to check this unless you want to. But if you come back over here to the conditions tab, you'll see that the actual dice roll that occurred when this button was pushed was a 15. If you come over here to a crosswind, you can see that a 15 essentially is no win. So the game caddy figured all that out for you and computed where the ball has carried to. So it's gone 210, uh, 45 yards left, and then uh, we've gotten an additional 40 yards of green roll. So we'll put the 40, excuse me, 40 yards of fairway roll. So I'll put uh, a 40 in there, and you can see that that then changes the distance to 250, 45 left, and uh, we're in good shape. We avoided the water, we avoided the out of bounds, and now when we update this shot, we're gonna be in the fairway, and you can see that uh, we're gonna be 135 yards out, uh, which means we won't be taking an approach shot for our second shot, and as a result of that, we'll have more latitude to be able to work the ball to the left uh, because we are uh, short-sighted and cannot aim. So that little demonstration not only showed you how uh, to use the wind uh, tools that are built into Game Caddy 5.2, it showed you a little bit of strategy about how to take advantage of those things when playing a hole like this on birthplace. Okay, so that's how you do calm wind. Everything's built in. If we wanted to go to player two to have him take uh, his shot, we would click on control Q and you'll notice that it switches over here to caddy two for us automatically and it calls up the wind rolls menu. It's done the lie uh, roll uh, excuse me, the wind roll uh, for us. It's uh, going to be a 35. Um, and again, I'm familiar enough with these charts to know that that means that we're not going to have any wind effect for um, Justin Rose's shot. So when I click continue uh, here, you'll see that this box is now empty and uh, Justin can plan his shot without having to worry about what the wind might do to it. All right, hope that was clear. Well, what I wanna do now is essentially start over and uh, change the wind so that we're dealing with a, um, a moderate or blustery wind. It doesn't really matter which one uh, I picked. They both work uh, the same way. But I'll come over here to the conditions tab uh, and I'm, again, we're starting over. I'm not going to, you know, redo all the lie rolls here. I'm just going to, you know, force this into a uh, particular uh, state. So we'll come up here to day wind. I'll click on that once. It changes from calm to moderate. If I clicked again, it would change it uh, over to blustery. But we'll just stick with the, the moderate wind here. And uh, when you have a moderate or blustery wind on birthplace, you also have to roll to find out whether it's a type A, type B, or type C, because the individual whole wind charts um, come in threes. So there's one for uh, each of those. So I'll just use the built-in dice roller, and it gives me a 15. And uh, according to the rules 
for birthplace, a roll of 11 to 35, you use type A. And as a reminder, I'm going to come down here to win type and I'm going to put an A in there, recognizing that that A doesn't actually do anything uh, in terms of uh, the calculations, but it is a reminder to me if I'm playing and I forget what the win type is or I play and I stop and I come back, I've got, you know, that uh, to serve as a reminder and then that will show up over on the caddy tabs uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, reload a new hole. So we've essentially kept everything the same here except we have changed this from a calm wind to a moderate wind and we've now established the type of wind that it is and so we'll be using the moderate A column on the um, uh, APA course board for hole one to determine the effect of the wind. And let's sh let me show you how to use the game caddy to uh, register that. So we'll come back to birthplace. Let's just pretend, you know, we're starting a whole new round here. Uh, we're going to transfer hole number one in. So put the one in. Notice I haven't done anything different with the um, configuration uh, settings. They're still on modified and we've still got auto roll and we've still got on each shot checked. Okay, so now we've got hole one um, set up here. Uh, we have a type A wind and it's moderate. And that means that we're going to have to use the APA course board to determine the wind effect. So I'll click on the uh, all-in-one menu. You'll notice that the wind rolls menu still pops up. Okay, we got a dice roll of 33 here. Okay, and uh, what we need to do is to look at the APA course board and see what a 33 translates to in terms of a moderate wind in the A column. And you can see here that it is, uh, the, the moderate winds are on the left, the blustery winds are on the right uh, of that hash mark. You can see we have a minus 10, five right for a 33. So what I'm gonna do up here in the user specified result I'm going to put in a minus 10 and I'm going to come over here and put a 5 for the 5 right and then I'm going to click the continue button. That's all you've got to do. And now if we look over here at the win boxes you'll see that the carry is a minus 10. We've got a 5 right so the game caddy now knows what was on the APA course board for that particular wind roll and that's the effect that it's going to have on this tee shot and I'm going to plan accordingly. So uh, we again we've got Kevin Na here last time I think we selected uh, 40 left and we um, are going to select let's say it's going to go five right this time I know that for sure uh, and I could select you know 45 left uh, to perhaps compensate for that so uh, I'll put uh, 45 in there, but recognizing that if I do that, now my aim distance adjustment is going to be 15 yards. You know, so it's, I'm penalized, if you want to think of it that way, an additional uh, five yards. Plus, I've got the 10 yards um, from the headwind that um, I'm facing. Okay, so we'll select in this case we'll select a three wood because we know that we we're gonna uh, be blown back some because of this uh, wind effect here and roll the dice and i've rolled a 35 this time on uh, nas card for a 35 in the w column it's a seven and i'll go ahead uh, that ball is going to go to the left anyway so i'm going to go ahead and take his average w i'll click this button I'll reduce it five yards. So I'll choose that, we'll take the shot. And now you'll see that that shot went 210 left 45. Now, there is no you know, variable wind in this case. So there is no uh, second wind roll involved. 
Uh, we had a steady win of minus 10, right 5, and this is where it put us at 210, left 45. And that's going to keep us in the fairway. We're going to roll an additional 40 yards um, from our fairway roll over here. We'll put that in. You can see we ended up at 250, left 45, not too far from where we were the first time. Okay, and we're, after we update that, we'll see again, we're in the fairway and not too far out. And we, again, are going to be in a good position to be able to work the ball because we're 135 yards out and we're short-sighted. So if you want to get close to pin number six, um, we shouldn't have too much difficulty, at least in terms of our club selection. Okay, so that's how you play birthplace with Game Caddy 5.2. Uh, I took you through this in uh, meticulous detail, um, but believe me, once you learn how to do this, you can fly through birthplace now, despite all the added wind rolls, because you're rolling for each shot. The wind rolls menu will know when wind can potentially affect a shot. It will always come up for you when that for each shot uh, checkbox is checked. And I'll call it up again one more time just so that you can see it here. And you can see um, the dice roll will happen for you automatically when auto roll is checked. If you don't like that, just check again to turn it off and the same for on each shot. That's it. Enjoy playing with Game Caddy 5.2. Enjoy playing Birthplace if you've got it. If you don't have it, go get it. You'll love playing it. I'm Scott Moeller. Grip it and rip it.